the iPhone 13 is real, but it's still missing a few things. Let's talk about them. Let's get a few things out of the way up top. Apple's phones are high quality and have been for a very long time. Apple's led the way on a great deal of features, which has caused its competitors to turn up their game. And that's great for all of us as consumers. We have a choice. So when I'm talking about missing features, I'm not gonna be talking about tech that doesn't exist or is just not ready like a scrollable display. I'm talking about features that already exist on other devices. Let's start with the big one, and that is the lack of USB-C on the iPhone 13. The iPhone 13 sticks to Apple's lightning connector. In some respects, that's great. If you had an older iPhone or iPad, you can reuse that cable. Lightning cables are reversible like USB-C, so that's good too. So why talk about the lack of USB-C on the iPhone 13? Well, Apple has decided to give the iPhone 13 Pro the ability to record video using ProRes. Here's what Apple had to say about that. ProRes offers exceptionally high color fidelity and more efficient encoding for use in pro video editing apps like Final Cut Pro. The company isn't lying. If you've ever edited video, you probably know that ProRes is really great when it comes to editing compared to something like an 8264 file. When Apple says ProRes has more efficient encoding for use in pro video apps, that is true. But when you're talking about file size, ProRes files can get very, very big because ProRes uses a different compression technology than something like H.264. So while you're getting great video from the iPhone 13 Pro, those ProRes files will be large, which ties to USB-C, just stick with me. Check out Apple's press release where it says, iPhone 13 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro Max support ProRes video recording in the camera app at 1080p 30fps with the 128 gigabyte storage option and up to 4K 30fps with 256, 512, and one terabyte storage options. So Apple knows you shouldn't record 4K ProRes video on an iPhone 13 Pro unless it has at least 256 gigs of storage because of the file size. So how are you getting your ProRes videos with their large file sizes off of your iPhone 13 Pro? You could go wireless with AirDrop if you've got a Mac, speeds may vary. How about using a lightning cable? Well, that cable uses USB 2.0, which maxes out at 480 megabits per second. If Apple went with the same USB-C connector that is on the new iPad mini, you'd max out at five gigabits per second. Which means it's up to 10 times faster than its predecessor. So if you had all of these massive video files that you wanted to move and edit on a computer, you could do that much faster if Apple slapped USB-C into the iPhone. The latest iPad Pros support up to 40 gigabits per second transfers, which is roughly 83 times faster than the iPhone. Also, please note, I'm just comparing Apple products to other Apple products. On top of that, you do not need to shoot in ProRes, so you can still have smaller, more compressed videos that can be transferred quickly over those connections. But there are the standard arguments for using USB-C in general. It's an industry standard. It's capable of delivering a lot of power to your device. You could charge a MacBook or a lot of other laptops and your iPhone with the same cable. You could attach USB-C devices to the iPhone like you can the iPad Pro and the new iPad mini. Now, maybe there's some technical reason that Apple could not fit a USB-C connector in the 13. All the other devices I mentioned were tablets or computers by Apple. But USB-C is in lots and lots of Android phones. So the technical wizardry required to get such a connector into a phone does exist in this timeline. What else is it missing? High refresh rate displays or what Apple calls ProMotion across the entire iPhone 13 lineup. If you want an iPhone that has a high refresh rate, you'll have to go Pro. Apple obviously sees this feature as notable. Here's what they said. ProMotion is also great for apps, providing more responsive inputs, smoother graphics, and more precise gameplay. Yeah, I agree, Apple. Those are great reasons to have ProMotion displays. So why not bring that feature to all the iPhones? Samsung's entire S20 line, including the base model and the fan edition, all packed in 120 hertz refresh rates. The $445 Motorola One 5G had a 90 hertz refresh rate. 
The iPad Pros have had Apple's 120 hertz ProMotion tech since 2017. You might be saying, I as it's Pro Motion. It should be on the Pro only. And I'd say, really? Does it really have to do that? How about that always on display? You know where you could just look at your phone, see the time and your notification icons? Still not a thing on iPhone. In my research, I was surprised to find that Nokia had a phone called the Lumia 925 that showed the time and battery level even when the phone was asleep. That was in 2013, and that phone was running Windows Phone 8. Surely Apple can figure this out, but alas, an always on display is not on the new iPhones. Good thing there's always on displays on the Apple Watch though. No sarcasm, it's handy. Speaking of handy, Apple is not totally on board with reverse wireless charging like a number of other phone makers. The iPhone 12 does let you wirelessly charge a MagSafe battery pack and the iPhone at the same time if the iPhone is plugged into a power source. That means the iPhone is sending power to the battery pack. I think Apple could really take advantage of the feature, especially with accessories like the Apple Watch and AirPods. I could see that happening in the future if Apple redesigns something like the case for the AirPods to attach to MagSafe equipped iPhones snappily. There's also no Apple stylus support on iPhones yet. That could be tricky due to engineering. Take a look at the new iPad mini. The volume buttons were relocated to the top of the device. That leaves the long sides nice and smooth so the second generation Apple Pencil can snap right to it. The iPhone 13 has buttons on each side, so maybe snapping a pencil wouldn't work that well. There's also the fact that the pencil has a 166 millimeter length and the biggest iPhone Pro, the Max, is 160.8 millimeters. The pencil would kind of dangle strangely on the side and that would be kind of silly. That is, unless they introduce the Apple Golf Pencil sometime in the future. And then there's no Touch ID in the display. The under display fingerprint scanner has been around for a while. You can get it on lots of devices, but not on the iPhone. Apple could have dragged Touch ID to the side button like it did for the iPad Air or the iPad Mini. If Apple went with that move, perhaps it could have lost the notch. Apple's Face ID tech still requires a lot of real estate. So while the notch is smaller, it's still pretty prominent. If you've made it this far into the video, thanks for sticking with me. The iPhone still have a ton of things going for it benchmarks that usually make Android phones look like a joke, high resale values, a huge amount of accessories, including the Apple Watch, great cameras, a really nice design, software updates from Apple for years, and Apple even killed off the 64 gigabyte model for its latest iPhone. Every iPhone 13 starts at 128 gigs and up to a terabyte on both Pro models. That's great. Also colors, colors are good. A lot of people are talking about this already, so a hat tip to Linus Tech Tips, Snazzy Labs, and CNET's Stephen Shankland. Is there a feature you want on the iPhone? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the bell, and hit the description if you want more info and links to iPhone things. I'm Ayaz Akhtar, and we'll see you online.